hey, so according to the Google notification I just saw, we have to get this thing done in eight hours because that's the longest Google Hangout they'll do. Um, <laughs> so, Brad, you're going to have to go a little short today. Is that all right? OK, that's fine. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, right? Yes. Deal? Boing. Welcome to the Acquia podcast, Drupal technology, community, and business. Welcome to the Acquia podcast, Drupal technology, community, and business. There's a module for that? There, of course there is. Hey, so, so I haven't recorded one of these in a while. This is a fresh new session from Jam's virtual Drupal camp, uh, which is a piece of the Acquia podcast. That's where I have the great privilege of talking with smart people, open source and Drupal and technology and community and business and how it all intertwines. This is a part of the podcast where I find things that have come out that uh, sound interesting or important going on in the Drupal community, people presenting sessions around the world uh, that I'd like to um, have findable. I'd like to make sure that our community can, uh, can uh, get a hold of those uh, now and in the future. So in that vein, Brad Cerniak, welcome to my Drupal camp. How are you today? Thanks. Thanks for having me. Uh, I'm doing great yourself. Cool. Well, you know. I mean, uh, you know, I've been on the road pretty hardcore for a couple of weeks, so um, it's probably a little too early to ask me. Uh, <laughs> where, where are you actually, physically? Uh, just outside of Detroit in Michigan in the USA. Cool. Okay. You wrote a blog post uh, that caught my eye a while back talking about taking Drupal to a hackathon, and that got us talked a bit, and that's why you're here today. And I want to get to, so today I want to get find out who you are, um, what you do. I want to talk a little bit about hackathons, um, especially in the context of sort of being technologies at hackathons, because I'm only really familiar with the loving, positive, collaborative kind of hackathons that we do at Drupal events where the technology choice is already obvious. So I'm, I'm a little bit curious about that. And then I'm going to hand this over to you to present your session about the um, development uh, principles that you follow and, and where you work and how you know they sort of function well at a hackathon because it's all about you know design uh, efficiency folding up code right using features and, and all of that stuff so uh, sound good sounds great Brad you work at a Drupal shop called well. You work at a development shop called Commercial Progression. Is that a Drupal only shop, or, or what do you what do you uh, good folks do? Yes, that is a it, uh, Commercial Progression is a, a Drupal only shop uh, uh, right here in Northville, Michigan, and we work with clients of all sizes, uh, picking up uh, uh, either inheriting clients from uh, previous developers because uh, we're pretty well known for. Uh, prompt and friendly service, um, and then uh, brand new site builds uh, ranging in all different sorts of sizes, and they're all built on Drupal. Okay, so I'm noticing that there's some delay in the sure. audio, and 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 the picture is not completely connected, but uh, we'll do our best today. I've been having okay. some problems with my connection, so hopefully, uh, hopefully we'll uh, we'll manage to get comprehensible, useful information out of this. Sure. Thing. How did you find Drupal? What's your first Drupal memory? Uh, my first Drupal memory was when I was uh, of my pre in a previous life. I was a librarian, and when I was getting uh, the job before uh, this one at, at Commercial Progression, I was working for um, a Canton Public Library, and uh, they were in the process of building a new site, and they were bringing me on as a developer to do that, and uh, they hadn't completely decided yet. And so my very first Drupal install was what ended up becoming the production site for that um, for that library, <laughs> and it was built in D six. Yeah, I, I believe that's what's called trial by fire in most places. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, so, what made you stay with Drupal then? Oh, I, um, 
I mean, I immediately fell in love. I had uh, done some WordPress work and um, had written uh, plain PHP applications. Uh, uh, wrote a Facebook app right when their API first came out, stuff like that. And uh, with Drupal, uh, just the idea of content types, just that um, like was a uh, kind of a revelation to me. So <laughs> the uh, uh, content architecture spoke to your librarian brain. Yes, it did. Yes, that's a great way to put it. <laughs> so. Um, do you see a lot of parallels between uh, the way that Americans think about the world? I suppose in structure, maybe that's an easy question, but what about in terms of the open source ethos, how we practice collaboration and transparency? Does that fit well into the librarian's world as well? I, I believe so, and as we'll uh, we'll discuss a little bit later, uh, it was part of my pitch was um, uh, to, to when going to the to the hackathon was uh, uh, libraries and having an open information uh, having principles of uh, that built into the the code of ethics uh, uh, really fits well meshes well with uh, the open source world, and you see that uh, in a lot of uh, list serves and news groups and things like that where people are talking about uh, open source technology in libraries uh, but I guess more uh, to the point uh, technologically uh, specific to Drupal a lot of, like this some of that content architecture kind of maps exactly to um, the information architecture principles uh, that you might find uh, going through a, a computer uh, uh, course in, in one of the uh, uh, more modern library schools. Um, I've seen the movie about your hackathon experience, and, and this is a bit of a spoiler, but uh, the talk about principles and ethics didn't go down so well. So <laughs> we're going to try. We're going to try. Uh, <laughs> we're going to try the pitch you did, the idealistic one, and then the pitch that you should have done. Right. Um, exactly. That's a perfect segue point for us. There was a called there was there was an announcement that there was going to be a hackathon uh, near you to build what to build a mobile app for the Detroit Public Library uh, the digital divide is a big uh, issue uh, people with lower incomes and uh, uh, not much access to um, a desktop computer or um, even really good hardware uh, uh, these people are underserved uh, in the population, especially when people with a full technology stack can get a lot more done. So uh, it's important to uh, provide that sort of access and, and mobile kind of bridges that. When the hackathon was announced, was there, was there a spec published ahead of time? Were there, was there a feature list? How does this, how does this sort, sort of thing work? Well, uh, it really goes hackathon to hackathon because when uh, last year we did uh, an event for uh, Code Michigan, so it was a, uh, the state sponsored it and put on a whole big thing, and they had a much better uh, spec for the for the um, the end result. Uh, it said, "Hey, here's a whole bunch of data. This is the this is these are the APIs we want you to to focus on, and this is what we'd like to see in the end." With the um, with the DPL one, uh, a lot of that came from about a, a 10 minute presentation at the beginning. So somebody came in and, and um, presented and said what we're looking for. And so uh, it was a little bit more open-ended, uh, but the word app was was kind of the operative term there. So um, a Drupal-based website was kind of at a disadvantage from the get-go. You show up at this event. Um, I'm, I, I'm interested, how many people showed up and do you know what technologies they were all working with? How and did, were you working by yourself? Were you able to form a team? How did that, how did that all go down? I'm trying to picture, and completely uh, innocently, I, I, you know, I, I know Drupal cons, sure. right? I know Drupal cons. So Oklahoma uh, tornado disaster happens and 75 people in, at Portland Drupal cons sit down in a room, right, and work together to make the um, help for OK application and then we open source that code so other people so fill me in on that whole how 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 the, how the day went down how things got started 
Sure. Uh, it, we, it started on a Friday evening, so everybody got out of work and got down there. There's a great space in Detroit called Grand Circus. Uh, they do uh, classes and things like that. It's just a great space, uh, whiteboards on all the walls, uh, uh, plenty of electro electrical plugs. So, I mean, like, this is a cool place to, to do an event like this. And then, you know, they catered out the whole weekend, so always a good time when you get your free food. Uh, but, uh, yeah, there are about 45 people, uh, and mo a lot of them were teams of coworkers from their respective companies. I was intending to go down with our in-house designer, Andy, and he and I would be working together. Uh, he ended up having to pull out, so uh, I went down there solo, and uh, uh, very early in the process, I got teamed up with somebody else who came solo. So uh, Sharon was a huge help. Uh, uh, she didn't have a lot of uh, Drupal experience, so we got a staging environment set up, and she went and did a lot of content work and worked through the night. It was crazy. So, uh, But yeah, uh, just different teams like that. And uh, they were working on all different types of stacks. Uh, there were people making iOS native apps. Uh, there were a couple of people who made static responsive sites. Um, and a, a number of people there um, had more design chops than, than development. So uh, some of them were more proofs of concept than, than anything else. But um, a whole bunch of really nice demos. So I had a good time watching the. Okay. the very, very beautiful. I was going to say very beautiful proofs of concept, maybe. Yes. Right. Now, you work through the weekend. Tell us, uh, tell us what you built. Sure. We more or less uh, redid uh, uh, their website in, into Drupal 7, made it fully responsive, uh, and put in as much real content as possible. Uh, and we did it in a way that if they wanted to use that as a jumping off point, they could. So uh, rather than trying to make really hasty uh, proofs of concept, uh, we focused on making sure there was a good fundamental uh, core of content and things like that. So your functionality really worked, and it was really ready to be extended. It was really ready to go to work. It wasn't, it wasn't sort of living wireframes or something, right? Right, exactly. Yeah, so we say this a lot. Um, as Drupal service providers, when we're pitching clients, when we're talking about our technology, say, so, so Drupal is really able to build you a functioning, working um, site, app, uh, backend, um, you know, Facebook app, whatever it is, within a couple of days, within a week, I mean, depending on the complexity, you know, within an incredibly compact time frame, do you think that worked to your advantage? And uh, do you think they could have taken your thing and then turned it into the city website or the library website? Absolutely. Uh, in terms of glue code, I only really wrote one form that got put into a block. Everything else was stuff built from contrib through the UI. Uh, so I mean, it, it was the site build part of the thing of the of a typical project, and then uh, taking a starter theme and just really fast tracking through it and uh, making something that looked nice. So yeah, absolutely. Even if they ditched a content type or if they ditched the theme and went to something else, uh, all the things there were fundamentally sound. And okay, nice. They so went you really did quickly. A, yeah. Right. So you did a completely working minimum viable product for the library in, in two days basically. It was uh, a little less than one day. It was twenty three hours. Oh twenty oh so you finished Saturday evening. Right, yes. <laughs> and then wow. and after being awake all that time went to a party. Okay, dude. You have to. You have to. <laughs> after all that, after all that work. So, um, we we touched on this before, but um, also in your blog post, ten things I learned using Drupal at a hackathon. It's really, really worth reading. Point number two: You've built the thing and you've got to pitch it, and you write, "Sell the solution, not the philosophy." I think all the work came off the rails when I opened my stupid mouth in front of the judges. <laughs> Instead of doing an in-depth demo of how functionally complete the site was and how well it worked on mobile, I spent a decent chunk of the allotted five minutes talking about open source software and how platform apps aren't the right fit. So now, um, as someone who speaks with businesses about this sort of thing uh, a lot, 
part, the, the more common risk, right, is that as technologists, we talk about features like, oh, it does this and it has WYSIWYG and look how, you know, um, all, the, all the bells and whistles are exciting for us and we're supposed to sell the benefits to the potential client or the customer we have. And it sounds like you kind of went off the deep end on, on, on another part of the spectrum, which I haven't heard of so much. So you basically, you went in and pitched about how the philosophy behind Drupal should match well with a librarian's uh, ideals and take on life and how things should work. And, and that's why they should take your app, right? So I want to I wanna hear just a, a thumbnail sketch of, of, of what you had to say then. And then, and then I'd like to, uh, to challenge you to, to, to give a micro version of the pitch that you should have given. Well, sure. I think you hit it exactly. Uh, uh, I went up there and, well, first off, there, there are two points. Uh, it really helps if you're awake uh, when you're giving a pitch. And uh, uh, if, some, if, if you're given a format ahead of time and sort of the deliverable that says, hey, we're done and we're ready to pitch was send us a slide deck. And so I was kind of ready to deliver in that format. And uh, I think other people in the room must have been more keen because they kind of just went, OK, I'm going to send one slide or something. And so I was keen on, on doing like bullet points and going up there and, and presenting. And that was problematic. So I went up there and I uh, said, first off, uh, the entire premise here of building an app is, is wrong, which that's a great way to endear yourself to the judges. And, uh, so then I explained like a responsive site, uh, you're not going to have to maintain multiple code bases for different platforms. It's going to work on different devices uh, on day one. Uh, so a responsive website is, is, a, is a great solution. And uh, then went into how uh, Drupal as an open source product and all of the uh, open resources that I had used, like Google Fonts, uh, with open licenses and uh, imagery and all that stuff, uh, how all of that uh, meshed with having um, open information and and uh, and keeping things workable and, and and free for for them. So, um, if I had spent a little bit less of this five minute pitch trying to, to convey that and just going in and, and I guess this would be the without having a demo open, just be like, so this is. Page X, look at our branch locator. It's got a cool map. You can click on this and see the address, um, uh, those sort of features, and going through and showing uh, uh, that they work, that there's data there, and then uh, even exploring the back end interface. And I think that's probably one of the, the uh, big advantages that a Drupal app has over um, some of the platform ones is you can show them how easy it is to manage the content. It's a content management system. It's great. So um, with the platform app, that's not necessarily the case. OK, so you think a, a winning pitch might have been um, actually pretty heavily feature focused. So but maybe saying, uh, um, I'm extrapolating a little bit here, but like, oh, here's the back end, and you've got um, this new book in the library, and look how easy it is, like author photo, ISBN number, title, description, and, and then click, and there it is, and here it is in the catalog, and then, um, you know, just gone through three or four things to make it clear that it was a sort of a complete solution. Mm -hmm. And some of the other things that people who uh, did pitches, including the, the, the winning app, uh, they had their... Uh, concept loaded on a device, and they would like hand a tablet or hand a phone to the judges and say, "Hey, check out how this works." So uh, oh. those are the sort of things that, like, making it tangible for for them um, is a is a big help. And one of the judges was um, the person who who came up and and delivered um, the informal spec ahead of time. And I really wish I would have uh, taken the opportunity to go over and talk to him. Because they have, like, the Detroit Public Library currently has a Drupal 6 site, and they had been advised at a certain point to wait until Drupal 8 because Drupal 8 
comes out of the box with responsive stuff. And so they, the implication is that Drupal 7 isn't responsive ready or this, that, the other. And yeah. uh, it's really easy to make a responsive site in pretty much any platform, but that was the impression that they had. And I didn't know that until after the pitch. <laughs> Ah, so, okay, so here's some tips. Um, taking Drupal to hackathons, listen carefully to the requirements. Um, you said something in your blog post about preparing, preparing ahead of time. So in this case, you could have had the chance to talk with this particular judge, you think, and get a little more insight into the, the preconceptions and the problems you were facing? Um, I kind of assume that I, I uh... I don't know how appropriate it is to kind of collude with uh, people, but if you have that opportunity and you can and you feel comfortable doing it um, at a particular hackathon, absolutely do it. Get as much information sure. as you can. Yeah. Sure. And I mean, you're actually, if they're the stakeholder, it, it, you're trying to make something to benefit them and everybody's there in the, you know, friendly spirit of, of making the world a better place, more or less. I think that's, I think that's probably fair enough. And let's see. Right. Um, don't demo your philosophy. Demo what your <laughs> demo demo what your code does. And um, I suppose my tip uh, on 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 that kind of a demo would be. Um, so I loved that some of them presented it on an actual device. That feels like it would be really winning. But I would also go through and say, um, look, my thing does this and this and this, and then that will that will make life better for. Um, the following stakeholders, like this will make it better for uh, <clears throat> library visitors and this will make it better for administrators and this will make it better for librarians and you know this will save you money and this will save you time. I'm working in okay. the benefits that the future brings you, um, you know, probably never hurts as well. Anyway, sounds like you did a cool thing. I hope that you're um, <clears throat> now building a fully fledged and themed library distribution to open source for the community very soon. When are you releasing that? Uh, later this week, I believe. That's. Uh, um, <laughs> uh, I I wish I had the time to. to <laughs> um, there's actually some really cool uh, um, things to check out if you are in the in the in the library world and are um, looking for that thing, and you're listening to this podcast right now. Um, and we might be able to put those uh, up as links for you. OK, so you're going to send me some notes, uh, stuff that uh, library people will think is cool and in the Drupal world, and we'll link to that. So what happens now is that I'm going to hand over uh, the, the uh, presentation uh, screen to you. Ah, I suppose the one thing I should say is that the stuff that Drupal brings to the table as far as rapid development and, and bringing, uh, you know, becoming a healthy minimum viable product uh, that helped Brad in a hackathon make a really useful uh, application. Brad's going to talk about some development principles and some ways that he and his colleagues <clears throat> at commercial progression see and use Drupal. Some tips about, like, do all these things and avoid all these other things. And that all sort of came uh, so from our conversation about how the, the, the hackathon was a success in, in technical terms. And so he's going to share with us principles about working with Drupal. If you are listening to the podcast, uh, the podcast is going to stop in a second. And you, if you want to see Brad's presentation, if you want to um, read more about this, see more about this, Here's how it works. You go to acquia.com slash podcasts. You find this podcast. You go to the podcast page. There's going to be the video of the session. Brad's slides are going to be embedded. We're going to give you a bunch of links about uh, libraries and uh, whatever information, what other, other information comes up in this. And uh, you can read all that and see all that. And uh, right, so podcast people, thank you for listening. Come over to acquia.com and check that stuff out. Brad, thank you for taking the time to talk with me. I am going to hand this over to you now. 